My name is Donna Fiesel and I'm your host of Donna's Edge Talk Show where truth matters. Thank you so much for watching every day Monday through Friday from 1 to 3 p.m. Central. As I get to come on with you in the afternoon, you can find us on television channel 182 on Charter Communications. Abundant television is found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. You can find us on television channel 182 on Charter Communications. And also you can find the podcast at thenewscasters.com. Thank you so much for watching. Today we're going to be talking about vinegar. Uh-huh, vinegar. Everybody knows I have asthma. And so I have to be really careful with cleaning products. And everything I do has to be the natural way uh, because of the asthma. So I found a real good um, article. And this is by AskAPrepper.com, the smartest people on earth. AskAPrepper.com. And they have 50 survival uses for vinegar. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Vinegar is one of those items that has so many uses and it's very, very inexpensive. Staple of every cabinet. It's in everybody's kitchen. Now, in fact, vinegar has so many different uses that it should be part of your kit in an emergency situation. So here are 50, and I hope we can get to all of them in a 30-minute show, but we're going to definitely try. It'll be worth listening and worth watching, okay? All right, number one. And I've used this numerous times. Unclog drains. Absolutely. Combine baking soda and vinegar to unclog a plugged drain. Now let me tell you how I do it. So I like to have uh, everything out of the drain. Okay, make sure all the water, if it's if it's water standing, and this this long hair of mine can cause a lot of clogged drains. So what, what you'll do is make sure the water is down as much as possible. So this is what I do. I go ahead and put a little bit of vinegar, about a cup of vinegar, and then I'll go ahead and put the baking soda and then flush it with more vinegar, maybe a couple, three cups of vinegar. Let it set. Then what you want to do is get hot water. Go ahead and start heating some water on the stove and pour that hot water and you'll get rid of it and you don't have to worry about you know chemicals or anything like that being in your drain as well so very very good use of of um not using a chemical okay number two i never heard of this one clean what clean wounds and it does make sense that it does happen okay so vinegar kills bacterial pathogens and it does contain a acetic acid which works the same way antiseptics do these properties make vinegar perfect for cleaning and disinfecting cuts and wounds. Okay, Phil can. Phil has he developed this from his grandmother. His grandmother had tissue skin almost, and so the older he gets, the more like his skin is like hers. And so he can swipe by something and get a, a wound. It doesn't take much. And so uh, I'm going to start using that on him. That way, there's no chemicals going melting into his body. You know, you can manage diabetes. So, and, and we do this every single morning anyway. So, vinegar, and particularly the apple cider vinegar that has the mother in it, is, is super good. Um, so, it's been shown to help lower blood pressure and blood sugar after meals when 20 milligrams is diluted in 40 milligrams of water. So, it'll be a two to one there. Um, and also may be useful to help moderate blood sugar after waking up. So, so we take this with our breakfast or after we've had our breakfast every day. So we'll get two tablespoons of vinegar and a tablespoon of, of uh, honey and about a eighth a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then we'll do about a uh, about a half a cup of water. Now this is this serves both of us, okay? And then also everybody knows I get um, my flowers and I make a tea out of it. So I'll get something, maybe my marigold tea, and put just a, a it's like a simple syrup I make. And then I pour that in there. Now you don't have to have all this stuff. I just add it myself. And then you shake it up and you have to use one of those little stirs inside so because of the the honey. And I like to make it while I'm cooking the other 
the rest of the breakfast. And then the way it kind of has time to settle, then I'll go ahead and use my little stir and, and, and get that, you know, get it combined really well. And then you'll have to shake it a little bit now because, the, again, that um, cinnamon is going to go down in settle in the bottom of the glass. So then I'll go ahead and pour it up. And that's what we have. We've been doing this for years. So Phil's triglycerides are high. And, or they were. And so he goes to the doctor. He has to go for checkups. I want to make sure everything's going to keep him around a long time. And so uh, the doctor always says, you know, um, you can't even take medicine. And so his, he keeps those at bay. So that's, that's a good thing. Manage diabetes and possibly lower blood sugar. Okay, now soothe bug bites. I'm a magnet for bugs. I, I don't know. We if Phil and I can be outside fishing, whatever, and they won't bother him, but I'm like a magnet. I get chiggers. I get all these things. So I'm going to keep this. I'm, I'm going to type off or, or go ahead and make a copy of this list for my own self, too. Again, you can find this on askaprepper.com. That's askaprepper.com. Okay, dabbing vinegar on a bug bite will reduce swelling and ease soreness around the site. We're going to try that. Okay, heal a sunburn. Um, that's another thing. I can go walk out in the sun and get, I don't get tans, you can tell that. I don't get tans, but I will get a sunburn like from, it's crazy. Two days, do I get a tan? No, turn white again. <laughs> so, a well diluted mixture of apple cider vinegar and water can help ease that irritation from sunburn. So, apple cider vinegar diluted in water can be applied to the affected area using a cloth soaked in the solution, a spray bottle, or just by adding it to a cool bath. And you don't have to worry about, you know, is something going to have going to have a bad side effect? You won't. This is one I could have used growing up. If you have a teenage boy, teenage girl, cures hiccups. Having hiccups is annoying, but vinegar can provide relief. So add one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar to one third cup of water and drink the mixture to stop hiccups. Now it doesn't say anything about adding honey to sweeten it, but I like the taste of it. And I'll tell you, maybe it's from my grandmother. My grandmother said that she craved pickles and just all kinds of stuff and coffee when she was pregnant. And I think she just handed it on down the line. I love to make pickles because I love to smell the vinegar <laughs> cooking in the kitchen. Okay, ease a sore throat. I've done this before and it works. While a sore throat will usually subside on its own, it takes a while, vinegar can help provide some relief. So the ACT can kill bacteria and ease the inflammation, which is associated with a sore throat. Try mixing diluted vinegar with honey and drinking the mixture to soothe a sore throat. You can also gargle with this mi mixture for a quick relief. Okay, inflammation causes a lot of problems with us throughout the years. The older we get, you can get inflammation in your knee before you know what you've got. Arthritis, you never know. So let's, let's talk about this one. For years, people have claimed that wrapping a sprained or sore body part in a cloth soaked in vinegar helps reduce swelling and inflammation. Hmm. Support digestive health. Proper digestion is key to a healthy body, yet millions of people suffer from these digestive issues. One or two teaspoons of vinegar in an eight ounce glass of water before eating can aid healthy digestion, reduces bloating and heartburn for many people. Um, they don't go for like an hour or two because I've, I've done this before. Okay, um, go ahead and take my vinegar. And, and then, you know, something happens, I get on the phone, get on the internet, do something, and we're not eating for an hour. I get an upset stomach if I do that. So what I like to do is take the vinegar either before or after I've had breakfast. If I take it on an empty stomach and, you know, wait a while before eating breakfast, that's just what it does for me. It doesn't do anything to feel. That's just me. Okay, this is another thing I use vinegar for. Remove the smell of smoke and other odors. While it's not necessarily a life-saving tip, vinegar is an excellent tool for combating odors and freshening fabrics. I do that too. Dilute vinegar and water and spray on fabrics to refresh them and remove odors. You can also add a splash of fabric softener or essential oils to create a more pleasant experience. Um, what I do sometimes, um, I, I do like my um, downy fabric softener. I do like that. But sometimes I just want to change. 
and in the winter time especially this helps and, and it's probably down here somewhere in all these top 50 um, so what I will do is grab some vinegar and put some essential oil in it and then I'll pour that into the washing machine and, and I'll tell you it takes away stains it also um, it is, is in case you've been around somebody it, it, I go I'll, I'll give, give it to you this way I love to go to thrift stores and sometimes I'll find a really nice dress that can be machine washable and it maybe somebody smoked who had it before and and I can't do the cigarette smoke it just sends me into never never land so um, what I'll do is put it in a small setting in a small cycle and I'll pour a cup of vinegar in it and it takes away the cigarette smell absolutely does same thing as if you buy a leather jacket I've done that before buy a leather jacket you want to use a sponge use some vinegar and then wipe down the jacket the lining and everything it will take that cigarette smell out isn't that cool okay cure heartburn so many people swear by the use of vinegar to ease heartburn swallowing just a tablespoon of vinegar can quickly provide relief okay ease an upset stomach um, much like treating heartburn, vinegar is also used to ease an upset stomach. Okay, um, also drinking a mixture of vinegar and water will soothe the upset stomach in seconds. All right, removes stickers. <laughs> I find this real, especially when you're like me and you go to thrift stores and you're constantly buying stuff. You got that little sticker on there and you can't get it off. This is another tip, may not be life-saving, but it's handy to know this, okay? So stubborn stickers can be removed by using vinegar. This tip can also come in handy when acquiring items secondhand, like I just said. Okay, <laughs> make those bugs bug off. Okay, so if you have ever been outside, um, you know how annoying that bugs can be. So you can just spritz it around you, or spritz it on your clothes, and you'll get rid of the bugs. It kills weeds. I've done this before. Okay. I can't do the chemical thing. So there is no doubt that vinegar has many uses and some are in the garden. Okay, so using a mixture of vinegar and dishwater, I, I like Dawn dishwashing soap, to kill weeds in the garden and grow healthier plants. So you'll need to mix it up really well and just pour it straight on it. Also be aware that um, acid found in vinegar can, can kill other plants and weeds, so make sure you apply as directly as possible don't spray it because it could get on your sunflowers or stuff whatever you're growing out there your beautiful tulips or whatever so make sure that you do a spot on this okay so if it's a weed only on the weed be really careful you can get rid of moss if you want to um, so combine one tablespoon of white vinegar with one gallon oh, by the way get your store brand vinegar don't spend a bunch of money on vinegar and spray the mixture on mossy areas of the garden, carefully saturating the top layer. Repeat daily until the moss dies. Um, you can also trap those annoying fruit flies. I live in the in the country, so we have 38 acres of land. And needless to say, there are cows out here, there are chickens, they attract flies like crazy. And so sometimes, they, on, even with all the windows down, the air conditioning on, sometimes they can still get in the house. This is what you can do. Add a small drop of dish soap to a dish and top with some vinegar. Um, cover the mixture with plastic wrap with holes poked in it, or you can use cheesecloth is what I do. And then leave it out to trap flies easily. That gets them. Okay, now clean and sanitize any surface. Okay, the best thing about vinegar, I love this idea right here. Um, the best thing about vinegar is it can be used on almost any surface without fear of damage. Since vinegar, vinegar is anti, an, antibacterial and kills many bacteria on contact, it is an excellent option for quickly sanitizing items before you use those. Another thing you can do is remove hard water stains on plastic. Hard water wrecks havoc on all surfaces and it's very difficult to remove. So you can use vinegar to remove hard water stains from plastic and bring your containers, your Tupperware, whatever you've got, back to life. Now these containers can be used for food storage in times of need. As a matter of fact, something I like to do 
especially now I like to use glass containers for going in the microwave um, because I've used I've ruined my Tupperware from from heating reheating spaghetti and stuff like that but one thing you can do um, the vinegar will kind of clean some of those stone stains out okay so prevent bacteria growth as explained, vinegar can kill microorganisms, those things we don't want, such as bacteria and viruses. So due to its, its antimicrobacterial uh, bacterial properties, vinegar has been used to treat ear infections, warts, and nail fungus, among other things. It's also been used to treat certain skin infections and burns. Vinegar is a multi-purpose product and should be placed in any preparedness kit make sure you have some available and by the way vinegar will just almost keep forever so I was lucky enough to buy vinegar a lot of it before it hiked up in prices I again I use store store brand doesn't hurt at all so I still have some vinegar put up from a long time ago I'm using it now you can disinfect your cutting board absolutely especially if you use something like chicken or fish or something like that any kind of meat pro, um, product so cutting boards can be used um, to get rid of bacteria without proper sanit sanitation barrier uh, bacteria can build up and um, yeah causing some issues with your body so clean and sanitize cutting boards using vinegar to keep to kill bacteria to keep your family safe so what I like to do um, after I, uh, anything, it doesn't even have to be meat, anything that I've used on my court cutting board, I'll go in ahead, after I'm finished, I'll wash it real good, and then I'll go in ahead and apply some vinegar, and and then I'll rinse, I'll let it set for a few minutes, and then I rinse it off, and then put, put my cutting board up, so I don't have to worry about it. Okay, freshen up the air. Again, this may seem insignificant, but vinegar can be used to freshen air. I know you're thinking, vinegar say so why do you want your house to smell like a hospital here's what you do okay mixing vinegar vinegar and water in a spray bottle and adding fabric softener or essential oils is what i like to do can help keep any place smelling fresh whatever your fragrant your favorite fragrance is i like roses um i like i like anything really that's an essential oil and just spritz it and it smells so good um, sanitize jars and containers. You know, food storage is vital in, in preparing for the future. And having containers and jars that are clean and sanitary is vital to safety. I've never done this, so this is a great idea. Um, now, my, my glasses in my canned canning jars and all those things, I usually clean mine in a dishwasher. And they're sterilized. But I really like this idea. So... I'm going to do this from now on. So and I'm still going to use the dishwasher, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and use some vinegar, and you know, right before I put my things in the jars, and I'm going to I'm going to do that. Okay, now create a grease cutting scrub. I've done this numerous times for your pots and your pans. So a well-known household tip that can come in handy during a crisis is the use of vinegar to create a scrub for your pots and pans. So combine equal parts salt and flour with just enough vinegar to create a paste. You can rub this paste over any cookware or utensils in warm water, rinse it with warm water, and dry it thoroughly with a soft dish towel. Um, and it may be down here just a little bit um, later in this particular article, but I like to use uh, a bit and, and, and get the kids in on this deal right here, okay? so. I like to use vinegar and baking soda. So go ahead and sweep your floors. Make sure that they're good and clean. And this is for everything. I mean, ceramic tile, the whole works. So what you can do is get the kids involved. They will want to clean floors when you do this. So give them some baking soda. That's not going to hurt them. So get some baking soda and let them just kind of sprinkle it around on the floors. Then have the kids... It's like a science project. They're going to love this. Then get the kids to toss out or spray some vinegar on top of the baking soda. And it's going to fizz up. And they can even get their hands in it. It's not going to hurt a thing. If you want them to scrub maybe the bathroom floor, I mean, they'll love doing this, okay? You may have to come behind them and clean it up a little bit, but they're going to have fun at it. And they're going to be cleaning something at the same time. You're giving them a responsibility. They're going to love the way it fizzes. 
It's just like a science project. So get the kids involved on doing that. Okay, treat dry skin and eczema. A lot of people suffer from eczema, and they do report that using vinegar provides them some relief. And it also has beta carotene in it, which aids in skin cell renewal. It's also rich in potassium, has high concentrations of minerals, and contains lactic acid. Um, and I tell you what I do sometimes. Well, I'm going to wait because I see the recipe that I use right here. Okay, now this means that vinegar can help treat and heal eczema. Use it for eczema if you have a few options here. Um, I use it for skin care, and I love it. So you can use it as a, as a moisturizer and mix one tablespoon with, with coconut oil. Okay, so that would be, and, and you know, just enough to make it kind of runny-like. Use it as a toner. I've done this a lot. So you can coat a cotton ball and dab it on your face. Um, go ahead and cleanse your skin first. And if you're using soaps and things like that, you want to make sure you got all last traces of soap off and your makeup off too. Did you know this? If you don't clean your skin thoroughly, you can add years to your, and, and it looks as if you have wrinkles. You really don't have them. All it is is your makeup still on your skin. You think you got it all off and you don't use vinegar for that okay you can use it on your hair oh man i do this all the time it, it, it so what you'll do you can mix it with sunflower oil to use on your hair but this is what i do on my hair so um and i use it like once a week so i'll go ahead and wash my hair and then i like to use vinegar and i have to use half a cup because i've got so much of this hair and so <laughs> thoroughly rinse all the shampoo out and then you want to put some vinegar full strength on your hair. You don't even have to let it sit. And then you'll want to rinse all of it off and then use your favorite moisturizer. And I'm going to tell you, your hair will be so light and so fluffy and it'll be so shiny, it's unreal. That's my secret, just for shiny hair. Okay, um, also use it as a toner on your face. We mentioned that just a few minutes ago. Um, also a great, great moisturizer um, is going to be um, using it in the mat, the bath, um, especially if you've had a sunburn, that would be a great thing to do. So what you want to do, if you're going to use it in the bath, add two cups of vinegar to a full tub of water, and that'll help too. It also slows off the dead skin cells. Drink it. Oh man, it's so good for you every day. It's good for your skin to drink it. So one to two tablespoons in an eight ounce glass of water every day. Another thing you want to do is combine it with honey. So combine two tablespoons. We talked about that a few minutes ago, but it's also good for the skin. So combine two tablespoons of vinegar with one tablespoon of honey in a glass of water and consume it two to three times a day with meals. Now another thing you can do is combine it with baking soda. So half a cup of, of water and one quarter tablespoon of baking soda, two tablespoons of vinegar, and then you can drink it. Um, you might want to add a little honey. I do that. <laughs> this makes it go down better and it tastes better. And these are things that, th this is for treatment of dry skin and eczema. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about um, treating nail fungus. And we'll be going into a commercial break in just about three minutes. Okay, so what you can do is treat nail fungus since vinegar is known to kill bacteria and fungus many people use it to treat nail fungus so to treat nail fungus with vinegar you just simply soak your nail in diluted vinegar just a few minutes a day until the fungus subsides so a mixture of one to one works best for this treatment so if you're going to use say a quarter cup of water use a quarter cup of vinegar Okay, now this is this is something I thought was kind of interesting. Stop, stop car windows from frosting over. <laughs> Who would have thought about that? We get that a lot here in the South. We can have absolutely, we can have um, all four seasons in one day. So if you've ever survived a northern winter, you know the way windows tend to freeze over and how annoying it is to wait for the defrost in your car to clear up. So this is what you do. Vinegar can quickly clear frost from windows when cold because it will not freeze and it doesn't leave streaks on the windows. Hmm. 
eradicate mildew let's talk about that now if you find that your bathroom has a buildup of mildew you can reach for a bottle of vinegar so vinegar is a safe natural choice for all kinds of cleaning and it works well to destroy mold and mildew super fast another thing you can do is get rid of a wart hmm I didn't know that so if you find yourself with an unwelcome friend such as a wart vinegar may be able to help so with clean hands take a cotton ball soaked in vinegar and apply it to the wart wherever it is covering it with tape to hold it in place now this treatment works best when it's done before bedtime and removed in the morning that doesn't say how long it would take for that to happen but that sounds pretty interesting okay now soften calluses vinegar can be used to soften calluses when needed so what you'll do is create a foot soak by mixing two cups of lukewarm water with one cup of vinegar I can see how that might happen okay oh we need to go into a commercial break <laughs> we'll be right back in just a few minutes y'all hang in there okay At Limon's Mexican Restaurant, located in Henniger, Alabama, and voted Best Mexican Restaurant of DeKalb County, Alabama 2020, we're here to serve you with authentic Mexican cuisine. Order easily online by going to limonsmex.com or call 256-657-3999 to place your order. We're open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Whether you're celebrating a cozy date night for two or a celebration for a crowd, at Le Mans, you'll love our atmosphere and friendly servers. Thank you for dining with Le Mans Mexican Restaurant. Jeff McCurdy of the McCurdy Law Firm has been a public service of this area for over 10 years. McCurdy, a member of the Henniger City Council, serves as prosecutor for the town of Sylvania and was named public defender for the city of Rainsville. The McCurdy Law Firm is located at 17326 Alabama Highway 75 in Henniger to better represent his Jackson and DeKalb County clients. If you need to be represented by a true public servant with proven success, call Jeff at 256 256- 996-8701 or send a private email to McCurdyLawFirm at gmail.com No representation is made that the legal services performed is greater than the legal services performed by other lawyers. My towels solved the problem that we've all had with towels. You go into the stores and they feel lotiony and soft, but then you get them home and they wind dry you. That's why I made my towels. They actually work, they're soft, and they absorb. And now I'm excited to announce two brand new lines of my towels. What makes them the best towels ever is they're now made with 100% long staple Shapir cotton. This is a combed ring spun cotton that makes my towels even softer and more absorbent than ever. And now you get a six piece set for an amazing introductory sale price as low as $29.98. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get my towels for only $29.98. Or you can get my designer premium line for just $20 more. Either way, you save 50% now on all my towels. They actually work. What a concept. This offer won't last long, so please order now. MyPillow.com At Liberty Bank, we're all about community. Whether it's to help with a charity fundraiser or help families in need. Toys at Christmas or a local football team, we're here for you. You soon realize the importance of family. Sometimes it's to build a new home or necessary home repairs. We're here for you. If you like the feel of a small town bank with all the conveniences of a big city bank, we're here to serve you. You will find us at any of our convenient locations in DeKalb, Marshall, Etowah, and Blunt Counties in North Alabama. You can call and speak with any of our friendly staff at 256-659-2175 or check us out on the web at libertybankal.com. And thank you for your support of our community. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Are you ready? 
Abby? We all wonder what tomorrow will bring, but the future lays itself at the feet of the prepared and surrenders to the will of the persistent. It's not easy, but today shapes you so you can shape tomorrow. With Northeast Alabama Community College, when the future asks if you're ready, you can answer. Yes. Begin your future at Northeast Alabama Community okay, College. Okay, we're back. My name is Donna, and I am your host of Donna's Edge Talk Show. You can find us on television channel 182 on Charter Communications Abundance Television, found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. Don't forget the podcast, thenewscasters.com. Oh, and by the way, if you would like for me to do a little research for you, that's I love doing that. So, and I would love to do, I'd be honored to do that for you. And you have any suggestions for the show as well? All you have to do is send an email to Donna at Donna's Edge.com. Donna at Donna's Edge.com. We're talking about everything vinegar wise. Okay, what in the world can vinegar do for you? It can do a lot of things. No chemicals, it's an all natural product. As a matter of fact, this next coming fall, I'm going to be making my own vinegar. Uh, made out of apples from the apple tree. So we'll just see how that turns out. You can make your own. You make your own lots of stuff. Now we're talking about softened calluses um, before we went to a commercial break, but I wanted to add this. So vinegar can of course be used to soften calluses and you can do a foot soak by adding two cups of lukewarm water and one cup of vinegar. A lot of people add salt to the mixture is what I wanted to add. So soak the calluses for 20 minutes and then treat them with a pumice stone. Man, I love those things to remove any hard skin. Pat dry, repeat as needed. If you don't have the stone, um, you can also use very, very soft graded sandpaper, okay? Fight mold, we talked about that. Um, uh, about mildew earlier. So fighting mold. So as with mildew, vinegar can also be used to reduce and remove mold. Um, get a little spray bottle and you just kind of spritz it on your shower curtain and that'll help as well. Okay, disinfect your toilet bowl. Toilets are kind of disgusting sometimes. So if you do not want to get your hands in the toilet bowl cleaner, which I don't, vinegar works the same way and it gives you a clean bowl free of bacteria. You want that. Okay, you know you can clean and sanitize your toothbrush holder. A lot of folks don't think about the toothbrush holder. And it's pretty important <laughs> there um, because what happens is you're using the water and then the, the you know, it kind of sits down in your toothbrush holder and it just kind of looks funky sometimes. So vinegar is safe, so safe you can be used on or around objects that will go in your mouth. So for example, Vinegar can be used as a used on a toothbrush holder without any kind of fear. Now, use vinegar in the washing machine. I do this all the time. Using white vinegar in the washing machine helps to remove hard water buildup, mildew, or mold. It also makes clothes come out brighter, cleaner, and stain free. Okay, scale fish with left less effort. Now, I, I know how to. I, I'm the one who always does the cleaning of the fish. Um, so, but I've never thought about scale fish with, with less effort. So one interesting use for vinegar is in scaling fish. So vinegar will work to loosen the fish scales, making them easier to remove for food preparation. Hmm, didn't know that. Makes sense though. Okay, dissolves glue. Okay, so vinegar has many talents and uses. One of those talents is loosening and removing tough glue from many surfaces. Depending on the surface type and amount of glue to remove, you'll, re you'll soak the area with white vinegar and just wait on it to loosen. Hmm. You also want to begin with diluted vinegar to ensure it doesn't damage the surface. Try that first. But in most cases, however, it's just safe just to pour the glue, the vinegar, excuse me, directly on the area to break down the glue. Vinegar is an excellent tool for removing wood glue and wallpaper glue. Well, I wish I'd known that before we moved in here. Front bedroom had the weirdest looking, I mean, it was in style in the day, in the 80s. Uh, but I had to remove some wallpaper. <laughs> this would have been awesome. It took forever to do. It also works to stop the glue residue from glass or strip it from glass. Especially if you like me and you go to thrift stores. Loosens the glue from stickers. Removes glue on plastic, which is hard to do. And many other types of adhesive on various surfaces. Hmm. Eliminates bacteria 
and freshens fabrics. So vinegar is an excellent tool for freshening fabrics and removing odors. So as explained previously, mix water, vinegar, and fabric softener or essential oils. So this vinegar solution kills bacteria and provides a fresh scent. Clean produce. So I do this all the time. Every time I gather my fruits and vegetables from the garden, this is a must do for me because I just have this thing about bugs have been on it before <laughs> and, I, I, and they are. I mean, it's outside. It's going to happen. You can't stop it. And so what you'll want to do is wash your produce in four cups of water and one cup of vinegar to keep it fresh and pest free. Soaking fruit in vinegar also helps to remove the, va the wax coating on grocery store fruits. Yeah, it does have that little waxy thing on there. I use it all the time in, preser in preserving food. By the way, the website, just in case you didn't hear it earlier, is askaprepper.com. Askaprepper.com, the smartest people on earth. Okay, preserving food. One of the most common uses for vinegar is preserving food. So pre preserving food in vinegar means the food will become long lasting and retain its crisp colorful qualities. While most food people use plain white vinegar for pickling, you can also use um, any kind of color enhanced um, vinegar for the flavor of the preserve. Now there are hundreds of pickling recipes available on my line and most provide easy follow instructions. But let me tell you, I've been, I've been doing this like forever, okay? I'm at the age I can quote this recipe forever. So what I like, to, my favorite recipe for pickles, and by the way, you can pickle anything, not only pickles, but I mean just everything from the garden. And by the way, pickled, um, pickled garlic and pickled onions are fabulous. So this is what you want to do. Um, so three cups of water, one cup of vinegar, and then you want about, about a third cup of salt. You want to heat those things. Go ahead and get it to a rolling boil. By the way, as soon as it starts boiling, you might want to take it off the stove because what happens is it starts boiling down. It'll boil down to almost nothing. So make sure you pay attention when it starts boiling. Okay, then uh, go ahead and have your, your jars sterilized. Um, go ahead and have those pickles already sliced up in there. If you wanted to put garlic in it, dill, I use dill in mine. So what you'll want to do is pour it over the pickles and then go ahead and seal it up. Okay, I want it to be hot. And your pickles are going to last a good couple of seasons. So, I mean, it's, it's fabulous. Okay, now this is something I didn't know, but revive wilted vegetables. So not only can you wash your vegetables in vinegar, it's also great at giving life to wilted veggies. So I'm, I'm thinking about my lettuces and kale, especially the kale sometimes. So to, rev to revive wilted veggies, soak them in water with a little bit of vinegar and sugar. Ah, replace lemon juice. If a recipe calls for lemon juice and you find you're all out, you can substitute vinegar in its place. Vinegar is also great when creating large batches of tomato sauce to store for use later as it keeps it fresh and bacteria free. I use it almost on everything, absolutely. Um, I don't know if it's going to have it in here a little bit later, um, but another thing I like to do, uh, we just don't like to drink buttermilk. And it's just not my thing, it's not Phil's thing either, but I like baking with it. And so Phil's biscuits are always made with buttermilk. So this is why that's a little trick. So what you can do, per cup of vinegar, you want to add the vinegar first, okay? So put a quarter cup of vinegar and then finish up the cup with milk. Automatically, you see it starts clabbering, you got buttermilk. <laughs> and it's good with cornbread too. You know, if you want to mix your cornbread up and um, you want to, instead of regular milk, just go ahead and use the buttermilk. And again, it's such a great thing. And if you don't have vinegar, and but you do have lemon juice, you can do that as well. Lemon juice will make you make your cakes and your your any of your baking goods just a little sweeter. But now vinegar is good too. All right, purify the air. Yes, yeah, a great way to do it. Let's check on the time. We're doing good. Okay, so vinegar will not only freshen the air, but it'll also kill any floating bacteria therefore purifying the air in your home. 
um, lift stains. I've done this so many times with Brad when he was a little boy. You know those grass stains are going to get from just like rubbing their knees. I think he did it on purpose. Just rubs his knees in grass. So this is what you can do to lift the stains. Um, we've all had white shirt with sweat stains, okay? And then kids with the grass stains on their, on their clothes. Thankfully, vinegar can help lift those stains so you can keep, continue to wear your favorite item of clothing. It can also remove stains from carpets. I've done that a lot. Um, to use vinegar to remove stains, you want to simply soak the item in vinegar for 15 minutes to a few hours. Um, depending on the strength of the stain. Um, with Brad, it was always several hours. Then you wash with laundry booster added to the washing machine. Also, pet odors. Maybe one of your pets had a little accident on the carpet or on anything else. Okay, it says right here, we mentioned how vinegar can be used to reduce and eliminate odors in your home, but pet odors are one of those smells that are difficult to get rid of. But vinegar works great for lifting the smell and reviving the odor. So just spritz it on there. I, I would use a little spray bottle to do that, and you'll get rid of them. Oh, wow. I didn't know this germinate seeds faster. Soaking seeds in vinegar aids the germination process by breaking down the seed, the seeds outer layer faster and encouraging sprouting. Aha! I'm going to try that. I'm about to go to, uh, I'm going to plant some seeds. I'm getting ready already for my garden for next year and also my hydroponics. I'll try that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put some seeds in the hydroponics system today. I'll go ahead and spritz just a little bit of vinegar, and then I'll report back to you and let you know how that turns out. Okay, um, also, detour those garden pests. Don't we have a lot of them? Yeah. Uh, man, we had those Japanese beetles this year that racked havoc on, my, on our garden. So if you've ever had a garden, you know how annoying garden pests can be to your plants. So vinegar will repel various garden pests, and it's safe enough to use in the soil, of course, surrounding your garden to get rid of everything from snails to slugs, <gasps> and gets rid of ants. Oh yeah, aphids gets rid of those. Destroy dandelions. I don't want to destroy them because I got bees. Okay, and they love them. And by the way, don't get rid of them. Make tea out of them. And let me tell you, you can do that. Okay, before I tell you how to destroy them, let's talk about dandelion tea. So what you'll do is get the blooms, and you only want the, the flowers, okay? You don't want the stems and all that stuff. And so what you're going to do is go ahead and if you can cut them out, whatever you want to do, and put them in a big bowl, and maybe a good four cups of them. And then what you'll do is put them in, your, in a big pan, and maybe a big, huge pot stock pot or something like that and then you what you want to do is fill it to about an inch above those dandelion flowers okay and then you want to boil them for at least 30 minutes okay put a top back on them and what you're going to do is make a tea out of them so put the top back on your stock pot or whatever you're going to boil it in let it set overnight you want to stir it and then let it set overnight then what you're going to do is drain all of that out and then you can make a sugar water out of it if you'd like to do that or you can just go ahead and just can it. Uh, I'll make a little sugar water out of it. So and I'll make it real sweet. So what I'll do for every cup of, of the the water that I that I made, the tea that I made, I'll add a quarter cup of sugar. And then you want to cook that for about 30 minutes. Let it cook down just a little bit. Can it do a water bath all through the year you're eating dandelion tea and it is so tasty it's so good the dandelions can quickly take over your yard we all know that and leave you swimming in a sea of yellow personally i like it i think it's pretty luckily vinegar is a safe and effective way to kill this invasive weed and keep your lawn looking perfect horticultural vinegar is best for ridding your yard of dandelions but horticulture vinegar contains 20 percent of this acidic compared to the 5% in regular vinegar. While permanent removal with vinegar is around a 50-50 chance, it will remove many of them from sight. But again, these things are great in salad, dandelion, those little flowers. Oh, they taste so good in salads. Okay, vinegar and dandelions. So what you can do is add, hmm, what are they doing here? Okay, vinegar and dandelions. Add one gallon of vinegar to a bucket 
Then what? this is you want to get rid of them. Don't eat them after doing this. Okay, so one gallon of vinegar to a bucket, and then you'll mix two tablespoons of dish soap in there. Dawn dishwashing detergent would be great for that. Okay, spray the mixture onto weeds on a sunny day when it's warm outside. Now don't do this after it's rained. It's, it, it won't work as well. Ensure that you soaked all exposed part of the plant, avoiding the grass as much as you possibly can. Repeat daily until those weeds die or is needed. Say goodbye to the ant colony. Um, I'm going to be into this one right here for sure. So as stated above, vinegar can help you combat an ant problem. Um, not your Aunt Susie, but like those little creepy crawly, you know. So mix white vinegar with water and spray on areas that are infested. Um, you can also spray the mixture directly on the ant hill to quickly eliminate the pest. Um, now, have you noticed sometimes when you use something <laughs> to get rid of ants in your yard, and they're gone that day, but they pop up somewhere else. You got to hope these ants take this this vinegar to that. They actually have a queen, just like a queen bee. There are queen ants, and what they're doing constantly that ant hill. They're they're going in. They're getting food and they're taking it back to the uh, queen ant who's in the colony. So hope that you get rid of them that way. Hope that they take some of that food that has the vinegar in it to the ants. That's the only way you're ever going to really get rid of them. You got to kill the queen, the queen ant in the colony. Okay. Uh, make paint stick to cement. Huh. Okay. Make paint stick to cement. If you ever tried to paint cement, you know the struggle. So the paint will not adhere to the surface and always winds up peeling away rather quickly. If you wash the area with vinegar before painting it, it will stick better and last longer. I'll make sure Phil gets this one. He loves painting the, the porch. And we have concrete paint um, porch. Okay, improve the lifespan of a wick. Huh. Oil lanterns are a must-have in case of emergency. However, oil lan lanterns often flicker and fade. You can prevent this by soaking the wicks of lantern in vinegar to help preserve them and help make them more absorbent of the oil. Hmm. I'm about to have a show. I'm going to be taping a show on making candles. I'll do one as, as just as a little test and we'll see if that works. That's interesting. So my guess, yeah, you would soak it. So now that's wicks of a lantern, okay, in vinegar, in case you have an oil lantern. I would think if it works for an oil lantern, that it would also work for a candle. I'm going to try that, and I'm going to I'm going to try it on one. Okay, I don't want to mess up a bunch of candles, but I'll try it on one, and then we're, we're going to see what happens there. Okay, now how much time do we have? Oh, I still got a few minutes. Okay, I saw also an article right here, and this is also in AskAPrepper.com. AskAPrepper.com, and it's the 12 must-have seeds in case of an upcoming crisis. So, from droughts to floods, anything can happen. So, there's no way of predicting when a crisis could attack our lives. For this reason, preppers seek a variety of different ways they can prepare themselves for a sudden crisis. From stockpiling food to ensuring proper sanitation, survivalists ensure they're always ready to combat challenging times. So, let's talk about these. What's a survival garden? And why do I need one? Okay, one fantastic way to combat the crisis is by investing in a survival garden. These gardens allow you to produce your own food, your own supply of nutritious fruits and vegetables. So investing energy and resources in a survival garden provides survivalists with an extra layer of protection of the, in case of a disaster. So how do you create a perfect garden? Okay, the core foundation in each survival garden is, is curating a high-quality seed. To ensure the perfect environment for your seeds, you need to design your garden appropriately. For this reason, make sure your vegetable garden exists in a spot that receives the most sunlight. That's number one. Moreover, make sure there's enough space between your beds to ensure you can um, tread over without causing any harm. Now, the main ingredient of a survival garden. After designing a garden comes choosing the right seeds. 
in reality they are the garden's backbone therefore you should have a good says telemarketer calling me hmm. they're probably going to tell me that they're going to pay for my college hmm. if i haven't paid by now at 64 years old i'm never going to pay for it i get those calls all the time they're so irritating just hang up on these people okay all right now in reality they are gordon's backbone and, and therefore you should have a good collection of seeds they should be long lasting easy to store to yield premium quality plantations now um, let's talk about the survive the quality of the survival seeds. I think I've got I, I have time. Okay, so qualities of survival seeds over a long era of crop um, experts have learned a lot of new seed traits. So the quality of seeds the defines its performance and its growth rate. Okay, here are the top qualities of survival seeds. These are extracted from the most delicious fruits and vegetables, thus they offer high quality yields. Now the diverse collection of seeds that grow on survival gardens makes planting seeds more manageable task in your growing area. Plus they require minimum care and space makes them the most attractive choice. Now there are so many options that allow you to choose seasonal as well as all year round seeds. Now these healthy seeds offer growers complete nutrition. Pick seeds that match your food safety concerns like organic, non-GMO, and so on. That way you ensure a healthy yield. Now the genetic characteristics of your seeds may make a difference as well. So consider picking heirloom, heirloom over hybrids to enjoy proven and healthy seeds. Also, regular seeds deteriorate during harvest. However, survival seeds have a low rate of deterioration in conditioning and harvesting seeds if stored properly. Now, how are the survival seeds different from regular seeds? Okay, survival seeds are organic seeds and are typically non-GMO and non-hybrid, making them a more popular option. Other than that, survival seeds boost a better shelf life. You can quickly store in a plastic bag or metal tin that closes tightly. I always store in a cool, dry, and dark place. I like to keep mine in the freezer. The best seeds for survival gardens. All right, here are the best seeds for survival gardens. Cabbage. Okay, cabbage is a winter harvest and this crop provides gardeners with a considerable amount of produce Planting a seed every two weeks offers you a good supply to last a whole year. Wow, I gotta start doing that. We love cabbage. Moreover, sowing a substantial amount of cabbage in winter ensures enough crops to last up to six months. You might also enjoy turning them into sauerkraut. I'm gonna try that too. I've never made sauerkraut. My grandmothers used to do it all the time. Okay, onions are also a vital ingredient in your kitchen. Often grown from onion sets, however, you can grow them from seeds in four months during the growing season. In contrast, you may cultivate the seedlings indoors and transplant them into a summer for a healthy yield. Plus, you can harvest spring onions and onion leaves with carrots when the time's right. Wild lettuce. So grown in almost every kind of soil, wild red lettuce boosts pain relieving and sedative effects. The incredible plant reduces pain by acting directly on your central nervous system. In fact, its sap is so useful it can numb most um, severe of pains. So the perfect alternative to commercial pain killing is um, pain killers, excuse me. Wild lettuce is a must-have product. I'm going to have to get some of that now. Now they got me on another tyrant. I'm going to be doing wild lettuce. Okay, um, radish. Radish may be at the bottom of most people's favorite vegetable list, but secures its place on top of being the, one of the fastest growing vegetables. With a fantastic sowing to harvest 20 to 30 days, the root vegetable allows users to harvest the vegetable before the month is even over. So avid gardeners can enjoy a continuous uh, harvest of radish simply if they continue sowing the seeds every day, each day, until the growth season comes to an end. Makes a lot of sense.
Okay, I'm still doing good. I'm still doing good. I can go ahead and handle this. Okay, tomatoes. I gotta have tomatoes. Okay, tomatoes, a vegetable popular in everyone's house. The tomato is something homeowners can't resist growing in the garden. So primarily, when available, in a, just many different types from current beef steak to a white knight. Moreover, if your garden lacks adequate space, you can stake tomatoes to ensure they grow vertically. That's what I do. So best of all, you can convert excess crops into a sauce. And another thing you can do is dehydrate them. I've been doing this for several weeks before the frost went on ahead and gathered all of the green tomatoes out of the garden and I had a box full of them. So I put them by the sliding glass door because it faces the south and they started turning red pretty quick. So I just have a few more left and then we're going to be cool. Now peppermint, an incredible aroma, these seeds yield delicious dark green leaves. So typically, you use peppermint sparingly in tea infusions. Peppermint boasts um, fantastic um, properties to treat nerves, bile, liver, and stomach problems. So once you sow them, you'll have to wait five to six month, months now before you can enjoy eating them. But let me tell you another thing about peppermint. Living out in the country, you attract bugs, spiders, mouses. Ugh. I hate mice. So anyway, mice do not like peppermint fragrance. They hate it. So what I'm doing is I'm growing seeds and I'm putting peppermint everywhere, the plant. So I'm going to put it in my greenhouse, in the, the garage. You got to water it now. It needs some kind of sun in the garage. Every once in a while you might want to put it outside. Um, I'm going to place it in the house too just in case. All the outbuildings, everything we got is going to have peppermint all over it. And I'm going to grow it also around the bees. Um, and then I'm also going to grow it um, around the gardening area as well. So we're going to get rid of mice one way or another. Okay, carrots. Typically grown during cool weather, cold weather, um, carrots offer a continuous nutritious and delicious yield. Not to mention you can grow these under the snow. <laughs> wow. USDA zones 4 through 10. These take about 2 to 3 months to grow appropriately. Potatoes. With the best of both worlds, potatoes are a calorie-dense crop having high protein, fiber, potassium, and vitamin C. Who would have thought about vitamin C? Each potato plant gives you four to five small potatoes. Now, during the harvesting period, consider keeping the best ones and green ones for seed stoking. Um, avoid eating green ones since they could be poisonous, so be real careful about that. Um, Meadowsweet. Meadowsweet is a tall perennial boasting a distinctive smell and even better taste. So in medieval times, people would crush the plant and use it as a pain reliever. Um, these are best grown from June to August in wet soil and are known to break a fever and encourage sweating during the flu. Corn. Corn is one cereal crop that is best grown during warm weather. Now, each stalk contains tall and lean to provide you with two or more ears of corn. A trio of corn, bean, and squash, otherwise known as three sisters, is an incredible plantation plan for you. Let's talk about wheat. We've got a couple more minutes. Uh, wheat is one of the most nutritious plantations. Wheat is high in carbs, fiber, proteins, and vitamin B. Plus, with little effort, little, just a little bit of effort, you can convert these into flour. Let's talk about spinach and then kale, and we got to go. Spinach offers survival gardeners with iron and vitamin-rich crop. Moreover, you can use it in almost every dish. Enjoy feasting on delicious leaves through the summer season by planting um, spinach in early spring. Now, kale, and I got just a continual harvest of kale. Kale requires at least two months before it's ready for harvesting. But the benefits of sowing kale is that you can grow it in almost any kind of soil to receive a nutritious end product. Plant these versatile seeds from spring to fall to enjoy munching on kale chips later on. <laughs> I love kale chips. Not Phil's favorite thing, but they're good for you. Okay, thank you so much for watching. My name is Donna, and I am your host of Donna's Edge Talk Show, Where Truth Matters. Hope you've enjoyed this um, segment right here. If you have uh, suggestions for shows, I thank them all. 
and you can send an email to Donna at Donna's Edge.com. Watch us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications and Abundance Television, which is found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. You can also find us on television, channel 182 Charter. Make sure you check out the podcast at thenewscasters.com. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.